Welcome back to Crazy Dave's Crew. I'm Laura, and you're watching Thursday Threads. I am really excited. I have finally learned how to do something new. Uh, I'm sure y'all have seen them. You've heard about them. Um, bowl cozies. And uh, it's just one of those things that I thought, you know, thinking about being in a show... And if nothing else, this would be something that my family could really use. Um, and I've got uh, going to do three different videos on bowl cozies. So this first video is my first method. And at this time, I do not know which one is my favorite. I'll let you know at the end of the third. Um, this one is done using the AccuQuilt Con. I'm limited to one size. Now, if I had the AccuQuilt go big, I could get a bigger die, which would make a bigger bowl cozy. But right now, you know, they're $700 for that machine, plus another 100 or so for the, the die. It's not in the budget today. But, and not everyone has an AccuQuilt. So, this first time around, we're going to use the AccuQuilt talk about pros and cons and then I will show you two other methods in later videos so one of the first things you need to do one you have to have 100% cotton fabric um, now if you know if it's for personal use and you know you are not putting it in the microwave Use whatever you want. But if you're giving it as a gift, or if you think you might put it the bowl in the cozy and put it in the microwave, then you are going to want to use 100% cotton fabric, 100% cotton thread, and a batting that is 100% cotton with no scrim. Um, and some of the packages will say no scrim. If it doesn't say no scrim, it probably has some scrim. And no, I am not well versed on what scrim is. <laughs> I think scrim is something that kind of holds everything, glues and resins that kind of helps everything hold together better. Um, the one thing I know is it is bad for the microwave. Thread. You want, and I've got the Coates and Clark. And if you look, see right there, 100% cotton. Uh, these were on sale at Joann's recently. Uh, buy three, get two free. And they're like $11, $10 a spool. But you can also get them from Walmart for $5.87, say $6. So, uh, and Walmart actually has a better selection of colors. If that doesn't sound crazy. So, and then there are some other ones that I got. Uh, this is Americana Quilting Thread. And it says it's 100% glissade cotton. Which I'm going to have to look that up to make sure that that's okay. So, um, before you assume, look it up. Uh, but I know if I can't use this on these, I can use it for something else. So I'm still good and I like the color. And when I went, I picked up a variety of colors. I've got brown, cream, gray, black, blue, and white. So, the first thing you're going to want to do is choose your fabric. Uh, I want to caution y'all. I loved this doggy fabric and it uh, was at Walmart. And it just has all of these doggies down. Um, but, um, having a design that goes that way, you're going to, you're going to have them upside down sometimes. So if you look on this side, they're upside down. So just a caution, um, me, I don't care. I'm fine with it. I think the doggies are cute and I like them, but like this fabric, there is no up and down, so it's a good, good fabric. 
Um, this one, again from Walmart. Uh, it's kind of a one a, a multi level because you've got uh, where it says scallions is upside down, but carrots is right side up. So that one can go either way. My Accu Quilt die. It is a 10 inch square. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is going to be a 10 inch square. But if I go from here to here, it's right at nine, you've got nine and a half inches. We'll cover it. So let's go from one inch to right here, it's nine. But let's give it a quarter inch allowance on each side. So that's going to make it nine and a half. So I need a nine and a half inch square of my fabric and my wrap and zap. <clears throat> wrap and zap is actually made for things like this. And you're going to need two for each bowl. So you need two pieces of your fabric and two pieces of your wrap and zap or 100% cotton no scrim batting. Um, we will have a link down below to the Amazon store and I'll make sure that the I just bought a big, um, I bought a little package from um, Hyder Hangout. If you're ever in Cleveland, Tennessee, you've got to check on Hyder Hangout and Betty's Quilt Shop. Awesome. Awesome. Um, bring cash, because if you bring your credit card, you're going to max out. Um, <clears throat> well, I ran out pretty quickly. Uh, I was just having so much fun making these, and I messed up on a couple. You know, as with anything, the first couple you do are going to be uh, interesting. Well, I went, I bought a big old bolt of wrap and zap from Amazon. It was here within a couple of days uh, with Prime Shipping. And I think it's 50 yards, something like that. Uh, I'll make sure that that is in our Amazon store. So you can check that out. I look under as seen on Thursday threads. So the first thing you need... You need your fabric cut out. Uh, you need your wrap and zap cut out. You need your bobbin and you're filled with 100% cotton thread and you need your thread to be 100% cotton. So we've got that done. Now let's cut it out. So I have the standard AccuQuilt Go and David bought this for me, oh gosh, years and years ago. It was back when I first got sick with myasthenia gravis and myasthenia gravis is a fatigability disorder and your arms get tired and you have muscle weakness and I was having a lot of trouble cutting and different things so this was a good way for me to have accurate cutting while I was undiagnosed and during the early times this way I could still sew and do things that made me happy I actually cut these a little bit too big but it was one of those things of hmm I could spend a lot of time trimming it down and making it perfect or I can just let the machine do it so the die is all covered so we're good and I'm doing just one layer of fabric and one layer of the wrap and zap. And this is one where you have to roll it through. So a little bit of cranking. And I am just going to kind of slide that off. And I have a very nice, it's ready to be sewn down. And now I'm going to do the other one. And 
of course, there's a lot of debate over whether the Aggie quilt wastes fabric or whatever. Um, I'll tell you, when I was having trouble cutting, I was wasting a lot of fabric by not having accurate cuts. Plus a lot of frustration and depression. So, I have another one. And we're going to set this aside and I'll show you the next step. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew a basic a stay stitch. Anyway, I'm going to sew from this corner to this corner and this corner to this corner. And I'm going to do that for both sets. I'm going ahead and using white in my machine. Uh, so I have 100% cotton thread and the same in the bobbin. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use white because there's so much white in this. And plus I want y'all to be able to see it. I'm going ahead and keeping my piecing foot on. And I'll... I'm going to use the piecing foot uh, as a guide. I... Uh, Definitely messed up with that earlier on my previous ones. And I'm not going to mark it or pin it. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. Of course, you can always lengthen your stitch if you want to, but that's not a, you know, make or break. I like to do a little bit of a stay stitch. because it's going to get sewn down across the edges. So I'm trying to hit the middle. And this would be a great time to do chain piecing so what I would normally do is have a stack of these cut out and I would choose all the ones that needed the white fabric and I would do all those and then all the ones that needed the brown fabric and do all those. That way I'm not always switching around and uh, starting and stopping and pulling the thread out. I would just keep on going. So when I come back I will have both of these done. So we're going to sew the darts now. And I have heard some people say this is very difficult. They just can't do it. And I was really worried about me being able to do it. Do it, But it's actually with practice. It takes practice. I'm going to start at the, what I call the bottom. And then go to the edge. And there's a reason for that. I want to make sure this gets stay stitched really well. This end over here... I'll do a little bit of stay stitch, but it's going to have two more seams going across it. So that should get locked in pretty good. This one, however, is not. So I want to make sure that I can go forward, backward, and then forward. And if I go backward and forward, but I want to make sure this is really well stitched. And maybe you're okay. I don't know. Um, maybe I'm overdoing it, but that's what I want to do. And again, if you've got uh, a stack of them, let's just do them Henry Ford assembly style. Now, this is where my piecing foot comes in. If I have too deep a seam, this size template will be too small for my cereal bowls, which is what we would use for soups, stews, um, macaroni and cheese, um, ice cream. Now, if you have a smaller bowl, of course you can take a deeper seam in there. And that's where I messed up on my first couple is I had too deep a seam. So I had to learn. So here's what I'm going to do. Right, wrong, or whatever. This is how I'm going to do it. Ordinarily, with my 
piecing of quilt, I would come right up there. Well, I'm going to go, instead of being up next to the guide, I'm going to try to get it right to the end, to the edge of this side of the foot. Does that make sense? I'm going to try to get it right there along the side of the foot. Not to the, to the guide, but to the side of the foot. So I want to make sure that these are still big enough for my cereal bowls. So I'm going to start. And I know that looks like I'm starting way too early. But... You can tell me how I'm doing. I'm going to back it up. My pen out. Really? Go, go, go slow. It's not a race. I'm going to do another one. I'll say the only person you're racing against is yourself. And I would prefer to get it right than get it fast. Uh, I always had an issue with my typing instructor when she was like, speed first, accuracy later. And I was like, uh, no accuracy. Speed will come if you're accurate. So here's another one. Again, I'm starting at the bottom. Trying to match that up to the edge of the, of the guide. I mean, the, uh, the foot, not the guide. Just a couple... a quick stay stitch but this one is not as important because it's going to get sewn over a couple times so let's go ahead and do the other six darts and then I'll show you what's next I like to go ahead and trim off all my threads too while I'm while I'm going through it that way I'm not having to worry about that at the end so we've got two darts done now we're just going to fold it over this way And now do these sides. And that's what it's going to look like. Okay. So I'm going to do these. And then we'll start putting it together. Now we're starting to take shape here. So we've done all four darts on both. And I'm going to take this one. So I have this like this. And then I have my other one. And we're going to put right sides to right sides. I'm going to first of all match up my darts. So we are actually, and I'm going to just kind of push my finger so that they're going in opposite directions. So that we can kind of nest them. them nice and even. I'm only pinning down my dart seams. So you've got two layers of wrap and zap or another type of non-scrim batting. And two layers of fabric. Make your fingers. I want to make sure I'm nicely matched up here at the edges and I'm getting those well 
Now comes the part that only you can decide. You need to sew it around, but you need to leave an opening for turning it. So that's one. You, as the sewist, will decide how big of an opening you want to leave. Uh, most people will say, you know, just leave a couple inches. Well, I certainly don't want to leave it here at the curve because that would be really difficult for closing up after we turn it. And I'm also going to try to match up my seams there. So the points come up good. Well, I'm probably going to leave a larger space than most people. So I'm going to put a pin right there. So I'm probably going to start here and end here so I have a larger than normal opening. Then that's a preference. So I'm going to pin around. And again, I, I like to pin you know your sewing method. You know your sewing style. Do you often slip? I do. I slip. And I don't want to slip. So I am going to pin. Alright. So I'm going to start Right about here. Make sure everything's nice and flat. About right there. And I am going to stay stitch it and then come around. And I'm going to use that piecing foot guide again. So this time I am going to use the full quarter inch. So that then when I'm sewing on the outside, I'll use the kind of a scant quarter. And that way I'll get everything nicely. So this time I am going to use the full quarter inch on my piecing guide. Again, this is just a preference. This is what I have found works for me. making sure I don't sew over my my pin but I am keeping that fabric right up next to my guide from my quarter inch piecing foot At any time, I can go back to the beginning and I can tie that off. This particular machine does not have an automatic tie and thread cutter. Uh, that's okay. How many of us grew up with one like that, you know? My pen is dragging it. And it's a little thick right there. Let's just kind of make sure that's coming this way. And it is. Good. And turn it. So we're going to just keep doing this all the way around until I get to that last pin that I marked. And I'll tie off my threads and we'll turn it and we'll finish it up. And 
there's my pin that I had put in for being my last stitch. So let's. And you probably don't have to tie these off because they're going to be because they're going to be on the inside and they'll be stitched over. But I'm going to. We're taking this nice and slow. So I have a decent sized opening there. And I'm going to take my forceps. And I'm just going to kind of reach in. Choose a corner. And start pulling out. So I said I probably could have had a smaller opening, but I like having the bigger opening. It makes it easier for me to open them up. Love my Alex Anderson 4-in-1 tool. Although I guess now it's a 3-in-1 tool because I've lost the other cap. I want to make sure I've got a nice rounded corner there. And this is the type of thing I could do while I'm watching TV. You know, have all these and I go turn them all at once. And then the next day, do the final. I am a firm believer in that assembly line. I think you waste less thread. You waste less time. It's repetitive you're not having to think so hard. You can just enjoy your machine. But I didn't think you guys would appreciate. Now, I am going to press this down so it's all nice here. And I will double check all my corners because that one is not quite as nice as that one. And I want it to be a nice, almost petal. There we go. I like that better. I think that one's good. I think that one's good. All right, I'm going to press this down. And when I press it, I'm going to make sure that this, where the opening is, gets pressed inward. Okay. And with these seams, it makes it kind of, it just seems to go beautifully. So like boom there you go nice and even so I'm going to press this down and then we'll come back for the final step final step so I've got my little opening turned inward and I've pinned there I've pressed down now I'm going to go back to my scant quarter inch seam. That way everything that's been turned under is going to get caught another time. Kind of double enforcing what we've done. And whoop. There we go. That's better. All right. And I personally don't like starting at my opening. I'm going to start at where these seams match and then come around and then tie off on this end. So I'm going to do a scant quarter inch on my final top stitching. A little bit of warning. When you sew over your dart it is kind of thick and your machine may kind of grunt at you a little bit but notice i'm doing a scan quarter inch just all the way around but be prepared there's a lot of fabric in there and i'm wanting to catch it so a scan quarter inch around and it's going through all of it 
probably be a good idea to change if you're doing like uh, the assembly line like I talked about <clears throat> change your needle before you do this on all of them good sharp needle so here's my pins I'm going over where I've tucked it in I'm gonna go nice and slow I know you're not seeing very well because I've got my fingers in the way But you can see I've right there. And I'm going to get right up to that pin without going over, just like Price is Right. As close as you can without going over. Readjust. And we'll do the same thing on this one. I'm going to get as close as I can without going over. Alright. Let's see here. There it is. Now, if I had done a quarter inch seam on all the way around and all the way through from the beginning, this would not fit my bowls. So I have made accommodations to make sure they fit my bowls. These can be thrown in the washing machine, tumble dry low, you know, wash cold water, etc. Right. I'm going to try to pull this through if I can, and I can't. Every now and then I, it gets up next to that guide, but that's okay. And by doing what I've done, even if I've made a mistake anywhere, which I can tell that I have, this is still going to hold together. And I know my boys will like this fabric. They are gamers. They can pass their classes. Maybe they'll be writing code. You never know. Oh, I wish Nick still had his YouTube channel up. He did this thing. He was nine years old. And he did a thing with Minecraft. Which Minecraft actually is okay with you doing stuff with their stuff um you know like disney will go after you if you you know infringe their copyright um or if they think you have but uh, minecraft actually you know wants people to use their stuff anyway he made this video dumb ways to die and he had i don't know how many millions of views um I was so impressed with him at the age that he was when he did that. He's pretty talented. If he ever decides to, you know, like, just do the work. He has a couple clients and I can't get that out.
that he does thumbnails and things for them. So I'm pretty impressed with him. He's pretty impressive when he wants to be. Again, this takes practice and I'm still not that practiced. Hear that? It moves through all that. So I've gone over where I started. Forward one more. And there we go. And all I have to do now is tie it off and it is ready. So we've got ourselves a little bow cozy. So, version one using the Accu Quilt. Pros. Perfect cutting every time. W using the fabric and the rapid zap at the same time. It just, they seem to stick together. So, easy to match it up. Um, like I said, uh, very accurate cutting. Con. With the Accu Quilt, you have one size. That's it. One size. Unless you buy the AccuQuilt Go Big and buy the bigger die, which isn't happening this week. So if I want to make a bigger bowl cozy, like maybe for a casserole dish at the next church potluck, I'm going to have to find another way. So, I already had the other way. In fact, I have two more ways. So don't forget to come back when we look over the other two methods. And again, we're going to talk about pros and cons and compare each method. And we'll kind of decide which one we like best. Uh, I have a feeling that's all going to determine, be determined by what we're doing at the time. If I'm just wanting to make a bunch of ice cream bowls, um, I'm probably going to go for my Anki quilt. But... I guess we'll have to see after we try out the other two methods. Be sure to come back for those. Don't forget you can find us on Facebook at Sewing and Crocheting for Beginners. By the way, I'd love to see your pictures. Um, do you have a pattern where you don't have to do the darts? I was a lady at um, Joanne's and she made a bunch of them for display in over the uh, 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 sewing machine area. And um, no darts. She had a different method. So maybe I have three more methods. Hmm, I have to think about that one. I just may have to go back and talk to her and see about what template she used. And uh, so there may be more than two more videos on bowl cozies. Lots of ways that we could do this. Uh, don't forget, you need 100% cotton, everything, if you think it's going to go in the microwave. If you're just using it for ice cream, do whatever, it's fine. No biggie, you know. <laughs> but if there's any chance it'll be put in the microwave, 100% cotton, um, anything else you do at your own risk. I hope you're inspired. Um, I hope you've been entertained a little bit, and like I said... You can tell I made some mistakes. Um, at least I can anyway. But I'm also okay with that because I know this is going to be one that my kids will use. Um, be sure to find us on Facebook, Crazy Dave's Crew, Cra Crazy D Ranch and Rabbit. We have some baby rabbits. Um, they're so cute. <laughs> I love them. And I uh, said sewing and crocheting for beginners. Be sure to send us pictures. Make comments down below. If you're curious about any of our materials, check out our Amazon store. Uh, definitely under the Thursday, uh, as seen on Thursday threads. I'll make sure that we have any templates, patterns, um, the wrap and zap. Uh, the cotton thread I probably won't because I don't know that you're going to find it better than at Walmart. Um, six dollars and a, a decent variety of colors. No, they don't have you know ten shades of pink, but 
it's not really meant to be hidden, you know, it's an extra little design. And of course, if you're a Vols fan or a Georgia fan or a uh, Harry Potter fan or like my son, a my other son, D uh, Dave, he loves Mickey Mouse. So, yes, I have Mickey Mouse fabric for him. If you know somebody who loves bumblebees, I personally loved that fabric. That was on the clearance rack. Uh, maybe somebody has cherries in their kitchen. So I, I've, I've had a really good time. Here we go. There's the Mickey Mouse fabric I found. Licensed fabric is going to cost more. But, uh, you know, it's worth it when you know it's for your kid and you know they're going to like it. So, something new under my belt. A new little project for me to make and have at our next uh, farmer's market or craft market. And, uh, Oh, and I am excited. Uh, Designs by Juju gave me permission to use her embroidery designs online on video right here to show you how to make dolls. Um, yes, I cheat. I use the embroidery machine. But the basic idea behind them is, you know, the same. Uh, I'm afraid embroidery, hand embroidery has never been my thing and I'm not really a good painter. For painting on fabric but uh anyway i am excited she has given me permission uh have that in an email so that will be something that will be coming up soon as well so at least two more videos of bowl cozies i have some projects from the so what box the simply earth box and a brand new box so be sure to check them out i am very excited i may have overdone it but i'm having a wonderful time I hope you are too. Have a great day. Go get some sunshine. You need the vitamin D. And I'll see you next time right here on Crazy Dave's Crew. Thanks for watching.